Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Good evening. This is Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio. It is 9.30 p.m. here in Calgary, Alberta, uh, Monday night, November the 8th, and I'm happy to be here. This is Child Abuse Prevention and Human Rights Abuse Prevention is up to us. And 30-minute live internet streaming radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com. And chat room is open. I have the link in there that I wanted to continue looking at. That is... Um, uh, it's a Canadian website. It's from the Canadian Forces, and it's all to do with family violence, taking a stand against family violence, and has a lot of information about domestic violence, domestic abuse, and also child abuse, and some different like wheels, domestic violence wheels, the uh, um, equality wheel, the the child abuse wheel, and then the the nurturing. Uh, your children wheel so some really interesting information I, I wanted to finish it up tonight and, and that's probably what we'll do and um, it's just uh, it's got it's kind of all inclusive it's just got everything on there it's just it's not even that long of an article but it's really worth reading I think so I hope you will go check that out and I'll give you the link for that so you know we're on for 30 minutes it's a, a live internet streaming radio broadcast and I'm not a professional counselor therapist or anything like that I'm just a private citizen paying to do my own blog talk shows and um talking about the issues of abuse, right, all types of abuse, and mainly child abuse and also, you know, domestic violence and whatnot. And um, I just think it's very important that people know that, you know, you have to listen at your own discretion. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about abuse. It's a very sensitive topic, and a lot of people are, you know, have a hard time listening to it, let alone talking about it. So if you if you feel like it might make you uncomfortable, just turn the show off, right? It's very important that you know, you know, what you're listening to, that you know that you're safe enough to listen and that you feel comfortable with it, because it is ultimately your discretion, right? And young people under the age of 18, I just ask that you have uh, permission to listen to my shows from an adult, someone who cares about you. I hope um, a parent, caregiver, teacher, coach, somebody to listen to a couple of my shows with you, just to see if it's something that you should be listening to, right? I don't know the age groups of the people that are listening to my shows, and there might be young children listening to my show, and and I just think that they they you should be protected at all times. You really deserve to be protected, and you have to be very careful what you're doing out there when you're online. So you have permission to listen to my shows, and then uh, you'll you know they can help you make that decision, right? Whether you should be listening. So we'll get right into this article, and this is from uh, I'll give you the, the actual title and the link and all that. It's from the National Defense of the Canadian Forces www.gc.ca, and this is called "Take a Stand Against Family Violence." Um, it's it's from 2007. From late October, to late October 2007, and so it's you know it's it's I don't know it's not really all that old. A lot of the material that we see out there regarding domestic abuse, child abuse, and whatnot is all from like 2009, 2008, 2007. There isn't really much posted. There's some information rolling in from this year, 2010, but it's not, not all that much because it takes a year for them to get it online uh, to do the studies and to do the to get it all developed. You know, for the information that's because 2010 is not quite over, so. Um, it's actually not all that old, and I think it's some really good information anyway. It's it's violence. You know, you can make a difference fact sheets. It says, you know, taking a stand against family violence. And we were, we swore, we've already went over the, the whole issue of family violence, the power and control wheel. And we went last week, we were looking at this, and the physical violence, the emotional abuse, and, and the whole issue, because, you know, um, October is the national um, dom- dom- national domestic abuse and, and, and violence uh, awareness month, right? And so down in the states, and so that's a lot of people are talking about it right now because it is the months, you know, where they kind of shed light on the whole issue of domestic abuse and domestic violence. And so I just wanted to con- kind of read this out and continue this on this, you know, uh, from last month, right? Because that was for October, but. Um, there's all kinds of great information on here, and I hope you will check it out. We were, so we left off with the child abuse stuff, and we finished that up pretty much talking about the whole issue of child abuse and family violence and child abuse, right? And the there's other information on here that I think is really good to look at for people who may be in a, in, in, in a domestic abuse situation, domestic violence, and, and you know if you if you are in that situation, you know. Make sure you get the information on how to keep yourself safe and, and how to develop a safety plan and and how to how to get help. You know there is help out there and sometimes it's not accessible. Sometimes it is, but there are. I think as long as you try, try to save your life. You know, try to save yourself. I think that's the big thing. It's a, there's a section here called Do you think your partner is abusing you? And I mean this could go for a man or a woman because we know that women can be abusers too. There's a lot of people out there that like to think that it's only men who abuse, but that that could be because they grew up in a home where 
it was the men in the family that were abusing it. They might have seen that with their friends as well, and they might not do a whole lot of research and realize that, you know, that's just not the case. There are a lot of abusive women out there. Um, there's a lot of damage by, by the males. Of men abuse is so much more damage. There's so many more women who are abused domestic, in, in domestic violence and domestic abuse situations and assaulted. Um, there's more women being assaulted at any given time than there are men, and that's why there's a there's such a huge issue. But it's just the fact that I can't we can't sit and say, well, there's never been a woman who's ever been abusive. There was just because that's a lie. That would be false, right? Women do abuse. Um, they can be very abusive. They can abuse their children. They can abuse other people. They can abuse men. Women actually are are known to abuse their own same sex partners. Women can be very abusive and so and I, I come from a family of abusive men and women. So like I saw both sides of it. And so I, I know that women can be very abusive and but also men can be very abusive too. So anyone can be an abuser. It's just important for people to know that. It doesn't take a gender, you know, a certain gender or an age group, uh, age specific. It has nothing to do with age, gender, uh nationality, race, you know, um Nothing. There's just anybody can be an abuser. Children can be abusers, grandparents, you know, uh, anyone, priests, doctors, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of education you have, what kind of side of the tracks you come from, uh, whether you're rich or poor, whether you have mental issues or not. Not every mentally, you know, challenged person uh, is abused, and not every mentally challenged person would abuse somebody. The, the abuse is just a choice, it's what people choose to do, and anyone can choose to abuse. So that's why they said here, do you think your partner is abusing you? And says, does your partner hit, uh, slap, kick, punch, or push you around? Do they hurt you or threaten to hurt you in other ways? Do they treat you like a possession or not a person? Do they force you to have sex against your wishes? Do they constantly put you down, make you feel stupid or worthless, uh, make it hard for you to leave, not let you have any, your own friends? It says, this first step is often the hardest. If nothing is done, the abuse will not stop, even if they say that they love you and they promise that it will never happen again. And that this is kind of where we left off with the domestic violence and abuse. They said, you know, there is help available. Call a friend or family member that you trust. Call a shelter. Call a women's Call a crisis line. Call police. Call authorities. Uh, violence is a crime. It's against the law to physically or sexually assault anyone. And it's uh, abuse of any kind is against the law. And so you have to document, document everything, you know, and get some help. Join a support group, uh, see a counselor, just any, you know, get some help. That's their recommendations here. We kind of went over that last week. They said, do you think you're an abuser in your relationship? This is where we didn't go into this. It says, ask yourself about your own behavior. It says, as a partner, when you are in a relationship, do you always have to be the one in charge? Do you believe that it is okay for you to behave in a certain way that, but not okay for your partner? their wishes in order to get what you want? Do you blame your partner for everything that goes wrong, insult them or put them down? Um, are you so jealous that you stop your partner from going places or seeing other people without you? Uh, have you ever pushed, slapped, or hit your partner? Have you told that the way you treat your partner is abusive or unacceptable? And they said, so they take a closer look at your management and you know our behavior is up to us to monitor our own behaviors if everybody was doing that we wouldn't people right that's the whole issue nobody there's people that can't do that and there's people that just think it's perfectly okay to hurt people and they just they, they can justify it think all right there's people out there that justify killing their children. They'll sit in the courts and they'll say, well, sure, I had to kill my child because uh, they were misbehaving. And, you know, they don't see anything wrong with hurting or killing their family members, right? That's the sad part is that so many people really don't take a look at their own behaviors and recognize uh, the, that they are being abusive, right? They think it's fine for them to do what they're doing. And it's actually not. It's the law. And unless someone, you know, can it can get through to that person and say, look, you know, what you're doing is wrong. It's abuse. It's wrong. It's got to stop. And there is help out there for people like you. And you know, get some help. Straighten up your life. Don't you know? Stop hurting your family. Stop hurting your your partner. And it is horrible what people do to each other. And I know firsthand. Uh, you know, it's it's absolutely harsh what happens to people. And I, I've seen this in my friends as well. Like, 
I'm just that I grew up in a domestic violence situation, domestic abuse, and child abuse. A lot of my friends carried this on into their lives because they were abused as children. They grew up in a lot of domestic violence and stuff. And so a lot of my friends carried this stuff on. And so not only was I in these situations as a child, then I, I these people I was hanging around with, these friends of mine, um, they were involved in all this. So I was kind of dragged in on their lives as well. So I got so tired of the violence. I got so sick and tired of it. And the thing is, it's not a fun way to live. It's not a fun They are always in conflict, even though they're they're in charge and they're saying, "Hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to control this situation by you know whether it's physically, emotionally, psychologically, sexually. I'm going to be the one that controls the whole thing." Um, they're not having a good time. You know what I mean? It might seem like it because they're getting their way and they're getting to push and slap and punch and kick and you know sexually use people. But the thing is, is their lives are really disgracefully uh, worthless. Right when when you're hurting somebody, I mean, what what good are you? You know what I mean? Um, it's like you, you should be helping your partner. You should be helping your family, loving your family, treating them right. Like you would want to be, you know, you'd want them to treat you the best way that they could, and you'd want them to do the best by you. So you know, you got to do the same thing for them. But not everybody feels that way, unfortunately. But it's very sad to grow up around them. kids. It's just really hard to be around that stuff, and then they take that quite often into their own lives. So I've seen. Yeah. Uh, violence is not a loss of control. They said here it's an control. So violence is a learned behavior you can change if you get help. Changing violent behavior takes work and time, but it's worth the effort. That's what it says. Worth, but it's worth it. And you know this is the thing. Like that's what we've been looking at as far as um, anger management from AngerResources.com in the morning. That's what I've been working on for the last like two three weeks. Sort of going over this whole information from Dave Decker and Michael Obsatz on uh, AngerResources.com. www.anger Resources.com, A N G E R E S O U R C E S dot com. Great information on there about how to control your anger so that it doesn't get out of control and that you don't abuse somebody, right? Because that's the last thing we want to do is become abusers, you know what I mean? Like if we've already lived and grown up in a domestic violence and abuse situation and abused children, you know, the last thing you want to do is take on that behavior. But it's almost inevitable if you grew up in that and that's all you know, you know, you tend to actually. So a lot of abuse. They do because it's a learned behavior, and they don't know really any other way to, to to handle it. So they said there's help for those who abuse. Steps to take to end your controlling behavior. They said taking responsibility for your actions. You you are responsible for your own behavior. You can change if you help. Uh, the next one they said is stop blaming your partner, um, alcohol, drugs, stress, or anything else for your abuse or for your abusive behavior. Blaming others for your own jealousy. And blame prevents change. So they said, blame for you know for, for your alcohol or blaming your partner or you know blaming alcohol, blaming drugs, blaming stress, or blame anything else, right? For abuse. A lot of times, abusers don't want to take responsibility for their own behavior. They blame everyone on them. They'll blame situation. So you know, family, um, or you know, it's because I I drink too much. So you know, there's to know it's your choice to do what you're doing. So if you're an abuser, you know, that that is your responsibility to get help with that because it is truly uh, a choice that you are making, right? And and it's a learned behavior a lot of times. So you have to get help. Learn new ways it says, of coping with your feelings. For example, take a time out. Stop and think about what you are doing. Walk away from the scene and allow yourself time to them. When you return to, to discuss issues, give your partner time to express their viewpoint. So, you know, we can walk away. We can take a time time out. If we think that we're going to become abusive all of a sudden and violent, or uh, whether it's physical or not, just might become verbally violent, right, and aggressive. And, and um, we can take a time out. We can walk away from the situation, go sit down and think about it and, and cool off, relax, you know. Hello, everybody. I just got bumped out of my own show, so if that happens every now and then, hope, thank God, not too often, but once in a while, I get uh, dropped from my show, so I had to go back in. So, yeah, this is the thing. It's it's it, we, If we're the abuser, then we need to get help, right? And so, 
we can stop blaming, right? We can learn new ways to cope. We can take a time out. We can stop and think about what we're doing, right? Walk away from the scene, calm down, right? Learn how to discuss things in a proper man, you know, in, a, in a proper way with people, right? So seek professional help with a counselor or in group support for those who abuse. Be sure you are going for yourself, not just to get your partner back, right? So, you know, out of retaliation, you know, you, you should be for yourself because you want to get help, right? Your community crisis line, local shelter, or MFRC, um, the uh, military force families resources center probably for abused women can tell you where groups are available but it, you you can look in the front of your phone book for domestic violence family violence um um you know these types of, of phone numbers for people who are having a hard time and just don't know how to cope you know there there's lots of ways that you can you can get in touch with people who can give you sort of a, a, you know give you some good advice and and sort of talk to you about what's going on and you can tell them about what's happening and they can be a good ear and a good shoulder and it's just so important to have somebody to talk to it says, what you can do to help an individual experiencing abuse, a friend, relative, coworker, or neighbor. This is really important information here for people. You know, with the amount of people that are abused or and in abusive relationships, right, uh, men or women, but mainly women, there's more, way more women. We just don't know how many men there are because men don't quite often come forward. But there's way they, they have done studies and they found that what is reported out there, there's just tons and tons more women being abused than men. So, I mean, half the time, you know, we're working with these people. We're working with women who are living in a home where, you know, their their partner is abusing them, whether it's emotionally, physically, you know, economically, whatever way they're being abused, you know, they're they're being abused. And, and so we can help people. There's ways we can help people. We have to know how to do it. There is ways to do it and there's ways not to do it because you can um, kind of make things worse for that person, right, by, by saying the wrong things, doing the wrong things. So they said what you can do to help an individual experiencing abuse, a friend, relative, coworker, or neighbor rep, they said, give them clear messages. Violence is never okay or justifiable because sometimes people who have been abused, and let's say that you know they have a black eye and they wear their sunglasses right to work and they show up with makeup on or something and you, they can't hide it. I mean, it's obvious, you know. And, and then you, you talk to them about it. Maybe they might even say, well, you know, it was a bad night or whatever. I had a fight with my boyfriend or, or my husband or whatever, my partner. And then, you know, you might say something like, well, that's not right. You know, violence is never okay. and It's not right for them to treat you like that. So a lot of times those people that have been abused will sit there and say, well, I asked for it. You know, it was my fault. They quite often will do that. I mean, almost 99% of the time will take on the responsibility for being hit. And it's never there. <laughs> I, I, you know what I mean? It's not. How can it be their, the, you know, their fault? It's never their fault, right? Because it's the abuser's choice to do what they're doing, right? So a lot of times they'll say stuff like, you know, well, it, you know, it was my fault, so he had to hit me or she had to hit me or whatever, right? It's not right. It's never right. It says violence is never okay or justifiable. It says give her clear messages like say, you know, or him. Let them know that safety and the children, their safety and the children's safety is always the most important issues and that partner assault is a crime and that they do not, cause the abuse it's not their fault right they said that they're not to blame for the partner's behavior you know it's it's truly their own choice to abuse that they cannot change their partner's behavior their partner want, is going to be ha the one that has to change their behavior you know a lot of people that have been abused think that oh if i behave a certain way they won't abuse me you know like a lot of even kids will be like that they'll be like oh if i if i'm a good kid then my parents won't abuse me and that's quite often not the case because the parents aren't abusing their children because they're being quote unquote bad it's because they're choosing to hurt that child and that's uh, they're trying to either control the child or they're just lashing out and using them as a punching bag right whichever the case may be and this could this is the same situation in domestic violence and and, and abuse with adults right or teens, you know, um, a lot of times people think, well, if I just change my behavior and I and I just learn how to please her or him, you know, and I and I, you know, I'm just a better person. They wouldn't have to treat me like this because quite often they're being told that they're worthless, that they're no good, that it's their fault, and and they're the reason why their partner has to has to lash out and hurt them and call them names or whatever they're doing, you know, verbally or, or physically abusing them or sexually abusing them. This is the thing; it's not their fault, and so they but they quite often will take on them. Take, take on that guilt and take on that role of, of the blame and it's important for, for people to reinforce to them that it is not their fault abuse is a choice and even though if they, they might not agree with you at the time but they'll go home and they'll think about it right they said uh, let them know that apologies and promises will not end violence and that they're not alone they can get help for themselves and their children 
you know they have to sometimes it's a little tricky because you know the red tape involved but the thing is or there just might not be enough services in your area you know things like this but you have to keep trying whatever you do you know there's the people i've heard some people out there who have said you know hey i tried it didn't work but you got to keep trying if you really want to save your life and you you know you have to keep trying you can't give up on it you just have to keep trying keep trying keep making the phone calls and keep keep working on it you know what i mean and eventually hopefully you will get some help right so important it says uh, realize that they that uh, they're not crazy right because quite often the abuser will have them thinking that they are absolutely crazy and that you know they're that they're just making all this stuff up you know and it's 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 a form of manipulation. And this way they can say, well, you're crazy. I would never do anything like that to you. Or Especially if there's a lot of psychological abuse and it's not necessarily physical abuse, but it's just a lot of um, emotional, psychological abuse. You know, the, the abuser will sometimes say, oh, you're just crazy. You're just making these things up, right? So then they, the partner thinks that the, 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 the victim thinks that they're, they're crazy, right? And it's just not true. Um, they said, and also to let them know that abuse is not a loss of control. It's a means of control. Because a lot of people don't understand that, see. They don't understand that there's abuse is a choice. If you ask anybody on the street if they if, if they realize that abuse is a choice, people would say, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, it, It's just because they just don't, they haven't done enough research on it to find out that that's the truth. And that uh, it's not a loss of control. Because quite often people think, oh, I got out of control and I, I hurt my partner or I got out of control and I hurt the kids, you know, I got a little carried away. Actually, it's not a loss of control at all. It's a means of control. It's like, okay, I'm going to take this as far as I have to to control the situation, whether it means physical violence, intimidation, um, you know, isolation, threats, uh, verbal abuse, emotional abuse, psychological abuse, physical abuse, whatever it is, they'll take it to that extreme, to whatever extreme they need to take it to control the situation. It's not a loss of control. It's a, it's like, what do I need to do to control the situation? That's what the abuser's thinking, right? And so they will, they'll use whatever means they have to in order to get what they want, right? And so that it's just a means of control. It's not a loss of control. But to us, to the people on the outside or people who victims, it looks like a loss of control because when people all of a sudden start throwing things at you or kicking you or punching you, slapping you around, grabbing you by the hair, sexually assaulting you, you know, you think, oh my God, they're out of control, you know. But actually, they're not. They're in 100% complete control, and they know what they're doing, <laughs> and they're just taking it all out, you know, to make sure that they get the best of you and that they get what they want from you and that that's the whole thing they are in control and so a lot of people think oh well maybe if i would just behave myself they wouldn't lose control like that so they just people don't really realize that abuse is not a person who's being out of control it's a person who's trying to control the situation it's very very uh something to be aware of right they said help her make a safety plan this is really important and you can get safety plans like on on online on the internet and you can um you can, there's websites out there, the domesticviolence.com, www.org, www.domesticviolence.org, and then there's the National Coalition, Coalition Against Domestic Violence, the NCADV, the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence.org. They, uh, they have good safety plans too, but if you type into your website, safety plan, domestic violence and abuse safety plan, or safety plan for domestic abuse, things like this, it'll probably bring up some safety plans for you. So that you can get an idea of what they look like, right? It's very important. Just talk with talk with this person about planning for their safety and their children's safety. Help them to identify a wide range of choices, right? Where to stay permanently, where to, you know, to leave the how to leave the relationship um, must not only be seen as the only choice, right? There there has to be other choices, wide range of choices, so that they don't feel pressured into doing something they don't want to do. Um, encourage and support them to make their own decisions, right? We're not supposed to be telling them what to do. Reason being is that you could tell them the wrong thing to do. They kind of have to know their gut instincts. They know what's going on in the home. They're the, they would be the one that would really know what's going on because they're being abused, right? So basically what you do is, is be supportive and just say, look, I'm here for you. I'll help you get whatever information you need and I can help you, um, you know, find the resources, right, or whatever. I'll just be a shoulder if you need somebody to talk to. Um you know, I'll keep papers for you if you want, like uh, important papers, copies and stuff of, of your all your documents and your your IDs and whatnot, just in case. And just let them know that you're there for them, and let and encourage them and support them to make their own decisions. And I've seen this on just about every single website that I've seen out there. It's very important because you know they don't. Well, quite often they'll turn 
uh, they'll actually go inward and they won't even talk to you anymore if you if you tell them stuff like, "I'll never talk to you again if you don't leave your partner." Like, because a lot of a lot of friends, of course, people don't want to see their their friends abused, you know, by their partners. A lot of people, like friends and family, will tell the uh, victim that, "Hey, if you don't leave so and so, then I'm gonna I'm not gonna talk to you anymore and I won't help you." Right, and it's because they're so desperate that they want them to save their lives, right? And they think, well, hey, if I tell them this, they'll do it. But see, quite often they won't. What they'll do is they'll throw away that friendship, they'll throw away that relationship because they're so stressed out they can't take any more garbage off of anybody. And they're like, look, if you're going to treat me that way when I'm in this situation, you can forget it. And I've just seen this myself personally, so I know firsthand what this is all about. You know, I've I've seen it within family situations as well as friends. So it's better to be supportive and just let help them and encourage them to make decisions that they need to make, offer choices, offer support, information, whatever you can get for them, and and you know try to just let them know that hey I'm here for you you know and and we'll get you you know what you need but you just you make those decisions and we'll make it happen and that's and they then they'll start to think hey uh, this person's really here for me and so when I do decide to go they're going to help me and it really might open up the door make an avenue for them right that they can think hey I could do this. I could totally do this, right? But if you close the door by saying, I won't have anything to do with you if you don't leave your partner who's abusing you just because you're so desperate because you care for them so de- so dearly that you want them to stay alive, uh, you might actually push them to not to not, to not not make the decision they need to make, which is to get out. So be very careful what you're doing. So things to have them consider when making a safety plan. Make a plan about what they're going to do, where they're going to go if they're in danger. Tell their children about the plan if they are old enough to understand. Uh, if they have a vehicle, make sure it has gas. Hide an extra set of keys. Hide money if they need to get away. Um, have a safe place to go just in case. A trusted friend, neighbor, relative, somebody that the, that the partner doesn't know with, know about, right? Work out a code. It says a code word that can be used on the phone with someone you trust if you're in danger. Yeah, I think that's very important to have a code word or a saying that you might say if, uh, for instance, you could say, oh, I, c- I can't, I've got a headache, Right? And if you said that, then that that person on the other end of the line would know immediately. They have to call 911 and get them over there if your life was being threatened, right? It's just so important. And so you can check the rest of this out here at www.vcds.forces.gc.ca forward slash CFPM uh, hyphen GPFC. There's a big old long thing. That's why I would just go to www.forces.gc.ca and look up uh, Take a Stand Against Family Violence, a black sheet. And it's just it's some really good information. And if you need any information, get a hold of me on Blog Talk Radio or Facebook. I'll be around, and if I can help you find any information, I'll, we'll continue this on Wednesday because I want to finish this one section called Early Warning Signs of Dating Violence for teens and whatnot or for people who are dating and just learning about somebody. And if you think your friend is being abused and, and if you think your friend is abusing their partner, things like this. So we'll, we'll finish this up or, or at least get get into it on Wednesday. So have a great night, everybody. Take care of yourselves. We'll be back on tomorrow morning, one child abuse survivor to another. And then uh, tomorrow night on Dreamcatchers Talk Radio for the headlines. We're going to be covering the child abuse headlines, sadly enough. And, um, you know, that's every Tuesday night we do that. Elizabeth Brawley and myself at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash Dreamcatchers. And um, have a great night, everybody. Just reach out and get some help, whatever you do. If you have to, call a crisis line. You know, those people are probably, a lot of them are survivors like yourself and like myself. Uh, survivors, and they know what it's like to be out there uh, with nobody to talk to. And so that's why they do what they do. And so, you know, they're, they're very helpful. Make sure that you do reach out and, and get some help, right, whatever you do. Take care of yourselves. We'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.